<laughs> so um, I, I look around the room and I notice that he's, bless him, he's tried to decorate the room like it's under the sea. Mm. It's very sparse and very haphazard. There's a few um, plastic fish hanging from the ceiling and there's like <laughs> a, a fishing net over their bookcase which looks suspiciously like cut up fish net tights that's been like stretched. It was all very like random like plastic seashells and all sorts. And he's like, oh, right, Gemma, um, do you notice anything about this room? She's like, yeah, you've hung some dead fish from the ceiling. What's been like, da -da 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 in the corner, like still <laughs> with my bubble machine, still going for it. Uh, and he was like, yeah, yeah, but what, what about over there? She's like, oh, you've got some like plastic Barbie shit over there. He's like, no, 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 but, but that one there. She's like, it's pink plastic seashell. And it, this interaction's going on forever. And he says, well, go and get it. She gets up picks up this plastic seashell, opens it, and there's a ring inside. So I'm like, thank God, thank God, this is nearly over. <laughs> and I'm like, what romantic gesture is he going to do? This is his moment where he's going to propose. And he's standing about as far away as me and Martin are now. Uh, and she opens the thing, looks at it, looks up at him, and he goes, that's for you, that is. Mm. <laughs> and then so. And me, being my fucking awkward self, I was like, I can't deal with silences. I can't deal with silences. <laughs> so I was like, so is that a yes then? <laughs> <laughs> and they both look at me like they want to kill me. Like just death stare. And they both look at me and go, of course it's a fucking yes. Oh, wow. And I was like, well, it's really time for me to get him back to the ocean now because, uh, you know, I don't have this tail for very long and I need to talk to King Triton. And, well, I hope you have a lovely time. Goodbye now. Goodbye. <laughs> and for, for all my worth, exit like this <laughs> with my fishtail arms. And I get outside. I'm like, what the ever loving fuck just happened? Um, I phone my boss and I'm like, please never do that again. Please never send me somewhere again. She went, oh, we've just got an email from them saying that they want you at the wedding party. I was like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, piss off. Uh, but yeah, so that was, that was the, that was the worst party I've ever done. Yeah, but at six, at six, it is a, it is a world out there that is dangerous. I never dangerous. knew that. No, don't, don't, don't know everything, mate. Mm. <laughs> but it, yeah, it happens to, I don't think it's exclusive to, to females. Yeah. I think it's amazing that you had and this isn't me putting you or anyone else down as a person, but like you had the the guts almost to, to, to call him and say, no, this isn't okay. Because I think so often people just kind of hope it goes away. Mm -hmm. I think the thing is, I'm a bit older now and I've got, I'm, I'm 60 films down the line on IMDb. That's what I said, you're 60. I don't know. <laughs> what? That's like, what what's, your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your regime? That's amazing. I wish I was 60. I'm, I'm 60 IMDb credits down the rabbit hole, so I'm kind of not so desperate anymore. So I sort of, nowadays, if I don't get a film, I think, ooh, you know. Um, but I think if you go back like 10 years ago, maybe I, when I was a bit more desperate and you sort of feel like, oh God, I need to get something on my CV, then maybe I would have gone along with it. So it's, and I think people do take advantage of people when they are young and they're in that, I hate to say actors, desperation, but people do take advantage of it. It um, takes a while to, to get to know yourself and how you're going to. I guess you've got to look after yourself. Oh, very much you? so. Yeah. Is there a way that we can look after each other? Is there, is there no is there, is there a... no sort of like safeguarding guidelines that equity kind of can are kind of put out? Or... Um, I mean, I, that we do. We have a whole body of work around safe spaces. At one point, there was a helpline that you could actually call. I mean, you can call and you can report somebody to the union. Um, yeah, and I, yes, I, I imagine there probably there are guidelines as to. I mean, it's it's kind of it's stuff that's mostly kind of common sense stuff, like mm. tell people where they're going to be. Um, communication has to be professional. You can't ask anyone to take their clothes off, you know, without a. They would, that would need to have been in writing beforehand, mm -hmm. so you could think about it. You can't throw it in on the day as an mm -hmm. afterthought. Um, a photographer can never touch you ever if they want to change your pose they point so they direct no one should ever put their hand on you um yeah so th there is stuff like that yeah. it doesn't matter the industry it doesn't matter where you are i think safeguarding should just be a thing just don't be a dickhead mm. i think that's the thing like 
And if you do get someone who's like some pissed up knobhead, hopefully the staff of the place, you just kind of have to go, not this one. But again, sometimes it doesn't happen. Mm. Such great advice. Just don't be a dickhead. Just yeah. Be 